Yo, what's going on? Hope everybody's having a good week. It's your boy Bonafide Beats. Um, what are we talking about today? What are we talking about? So um, I got this beat right here that I tracked through the task cam. Um, nine times out of ten, I'll do a two bus kind of a finalizer mix. In certain cases, if I really want more control to tailor to like a mix, I'll, I'll track it out to, through the task cam. Um, a lot, I got a lot of requests of people asking me, how do I mix on a task cam, especially for people that are either new into mixing on a task cam or just um, new into mixing in general. Uh, so I felt like this was the best video to do that. Um, I got my angles right, so when I do pan over to the mixer, you guys should get a view of the mixer and what I'm doing, what I'm doing in real time and why I'm doing it and how I'm doing it and the reason why for certain things that I do in the mixer that hopefully that can translate to you guys when you guys mix in the task cam. Um, and again, everything is subjective, so don't take it as, you know, what I do is the right way. Um, I'm always I'm always open to open dialect, so like anything that you think I did wrong or you think I could have done differently, feel free to drop it in the comments. Uh, if you think what I did you like, feel free to drop it in the comments as well. Um, I'm always here to, to share information as well as much to receive information, so I wanna make sure that I, I make that transparent as clear as day. Um, but yeah, let's jump into the mix, right? So, I got I got this beat, um, right? Got the sample right here. I got the sample right here. Pretty straightforward. Um, Thirty-two chops. Uh, I made a little simple play out of it, right? I got I got a, I got a, a bass track right here. You know, you just, uh, the simple, simplest thing is copy and pasting the sample, uh, low pass filter, EQ it, compress it, get it going the way how it is going, and then a drum bus with a kick. But not only did we do all of that, what also we did was we were trying to marry the sound together. Um, we're trying to glue the sound together in a perfect way that it, it sits on top of each other. Prior to going into the mixer, uh, I always got to explain the signal flow. So MP, you know, it gets routed to the, the UAD Apollo. From the Apollo, I might do a little bit of rough mix leveling, because uh, I guess certain emulation of plugins that I don't have access to, it will be great to apply that now. Uh, in series, of course, and or parallel. After we leave the UAD, we now we get to the mixer, we split signal, to the side chain, to the either FMR, to the focus right, to the transformer. Uh, once we figure out what the play is, we'll level over here. And then from here, we'll go from the DJ mixer to the SP202 uh, in a summing kind of way. Because remember, this is a summing console. SP202, SP404, route it back is into a true channel on the UAD. And then from here, I'll probably do a little bit of mastering on the FL Studio and, you know, some cleaning up on certain resonance that I can't get really touched on in the mixer. Now we're here, um, the camera should shift from where I'm in, at right here to the, to the, to the mix of the, the mixer. And I'm gonna try to make this easy, bear with me. So let me, um, let me take this microphone out one second. So we got a sample here. By the way, forgive me if the, if this, the repetitive playing of this beat gets annoying, but, um, so I got a sample here. In this sample, I have the preamp driven a quarter of the way. I don't know if you can see that I have a quarter of the way. Let me actually zoom in. So I have the, I have the preamp driven a quarter of the way for the sample. No compression, because I want it to be clean as hell with this. A little bit of EQ on the, on the, on the bass, but I want to suggest it a little. So you guys see that. And then from there, we have our aux bus. The aux bus doesn't have much going on, except for the reverb. And that's pretty much it from that angle. Now, on the bass side, prior to coming into this bass channel, I put, I think, a Fairchild. Fairchild 10, no, sorry, Fairchild 600. 
I wanted to get the bass to stay stagnant. If you could look at the meter, um, it was bouncing up and down. So I wanted to get control of that from when it down, um, digress and regresses. So I did that to get that stable. And then I just played it with the fader to make sure it sits married to the sample. It should be married that you should, it should, you should not notice it. It should just be a little low end on the 20 hertz side, 30 hertz side. You shouldn't have to notice it, but the minute I take it out, you can notice a little bit of it. I sh it should not be cranked. Um, by the way, on the preamp side for the for the bass, I got it like uh, counterclockwise, lower than a half. Uh, I just wanted to drive it a little, just to make sure I'm getting some grit and some um, harmonic distortion. Um, this is a digital mixer, so um, even though it's not analog, because this is a task cam, when we do compare the track dial of this versus the multi-track recording of this, you get some color, um, some richness color, as fascinating as that sounds for a digital, a digital mixer. And we'll display that shortly. So back again, the bass. We got it a little bit lower than a half. Uh, I thought about putting compression, but I felt like it was too uh, crushed, so I didn't touch it. Uh, I put a little bit of EQ on the low end side, nothing on the aux side. Uh, it's a mono bass, so I summed everything prior to this on the MPC, so that's why it's on a, it's on a single mono channel, and it's dead center, so that's the goal for that. So when I turn this back on, it just sounds right, it sounds right. After that, I'm sitting here and I'm like, yo, this would def this definitely needs a drum track, but what kind of a drum track can we use? So I was going through my drums, trying to figure out what I can pull up with, and I came up with this. So with these kind of drum with these kind of drum breaks, you know, uh, sonics is all over the place. Whether it would be something like this, something of the of the latter of this. So I had to do a kind of little bit, bit of cleaning up on the MPC. So now from the mixer side, I really drove the preamp. I drove it uh, more than half half. I really wanted to emphasize on the on the percussion. I don't really care too much for the for the low end, so to speak. And this is just what's playing in my head. I know that I know I needed a drum break. But I didn't want the drums to pop up more so than the percussion. So you hear the hat, you hear the snare. You might even hear um, my open hi hat right there. Um, I didn't really care for the drum because I was gonna I was gonna fill those with ghost kicks. I already knew what that was gonna be in my, in my head. But the drum break had to sound good enough without the drum, with the, without the bass kick, uh, a separate bass kick that I added. So what I drove that I wanted to emphasize the percussion. Now I don't know if you can see on my task cam. There's a low cut of 100 hertz here. I would dis it's already in but I'm gonna disable it, but this is this how it sound. So remember when I said I cut it the low end below 20 hertz, I still I heard some low noise, and I'll, I'll hear it again. When you disable the low cut of 100 hertz, everything below 100 hertz is enabled, and you still have some bottom low end. And you can use a spectral um, analyzer to see what's what's clashing, but I could hear it. And I didn't like that. And I have the compressor enabled under here and it was working harder because of that low end. So that's why I enabled the low cut, anything below 100 hertz to cut. That's all I wanted. I don't want nothing else. That's all I wanted. So now with this compressor enabled, I don't know if you can see it. Let me try to zoom in a little bit with the camera. With the compressor enabled, it's only tacking those snares and that open eye hat when it's above the threshold, just to keep it in place and still let that percussion pop. That's what I wanted. Now, after that, we in the EQ side. With the EQ, I'm emphasizing the mid range because it was a little, it was a little hollow. So I, I pushed that up, I think, by 700 hertz. Uh, left the low end alone and left the high end alone. Just let that rock. And then after that, we talk about the aux bus. So now, if we are on the aux bus side, I, this is my this aux one is married to my side chain on my Alesis uh, 3630. That's what I wanted. So now this is uh, engaging the side chain on the sample bus. Very subtle, by the way. Very subtle. Um, 
when I press, when I disengage this, you should hear the side chain. But again, it's very subtle and that's what I wanted. I didn't want it to be something exaggerated. All right, so let me bring everything back in. Let's bring everything back in. I'm gonna take this off. How do I do this? And why is still solo? There we go. Do this. So now everything is cohesive. I don't know if you can see my meters. Everything's cohesive. And that, that's something that has to be done prior to any kind of additional processing. You want to get a good level. It's just to still sound somewhat cohesive with a level. You don't want to have your bass too high. You don't want to have your kick too high. You want to make sure everything is sitting cohesively in the mix. That's the goal before we do any additional processing. Can the mix sound good uh, before the fact and after the fact with or without this, the, the glue and all that stuff. So that's why I was very crucial to faders prior to the mixer and after the mixer, right? Because everything is in series. And anything additionally, we just tweak. If you start adding additional processing stuff like equalizers and compressors and that shit still don't sound good then you have a deeper problem with the with the primary mix at hand so that's why leveling is important panning is important little techniques of letting things sit in the stereo image like on the right side of the of the beat whether it's a hat or a kick or a ghost kick for that matter uh, if those if those things could sit prior properly into the mix anything after that is the cherry on top and that's the goal and that's what you want to aim for right so with that only thing the beat was missing was a ghost kick was this right here and all i did with this kick it was coming in too hot on the mp so i lowered it on the mp and then on the uad side i went I actually went tape first and then on neve and i wanted to drive the kick so you might see a little of clipping here, but I did that intentionally because I wanted to to get distortion before I get to the mixer. On the mixer side, it's doing everything that it needs to do as far as the hertz, 60 hertz up to like 50. Um, so I didn't have to low cut that. Only thing I had to do was bring the fader down. Let me zoom out so you can see that. All I had to do was bring the fader down just enough to sit with the drum break because remember remember I, I, I disengage anything below 100 hertz on the drum break just for that kick to sit properly in the mix seated really well right i took a little bit of the highs out left the mids left the left the bass emphasize the aux bus to side chain on the at least 3630 after all that that is done you can see all the faders we're going to disengage everything one sec Let's hear that sound. Now from here, we just EQ and leveling, right? And I'm gonna make a point after this. Everything that you see here is coming into a, a, a sub bus. From this sub bus, I don't know if you can see, it's coming from here. It's coming out of here, out of my patch bay. And from my patch bay, it's coming out one and two going into my, my FMR compressor. I was playing back and forth with the FMR compressor to see if I want to keep it, but I, I didn't feel like it was necessary. So with a mix like this, we would have to export it and it's gonna sum everything up, kind of like the old task cam mixers with the tape. We have to record it and it gets some onto that tape. You get some glue, you get some richness, you get some bottom end, um, you name it. Because even though everything is individually tracked up on a channel, it sounds good glued together, but you'll get that real multi-track. That's what they promote with this task cam is because if they have each knob is a MTR setting. So if I fuck around and turn all of those on, record it, you really have to record and play and do that in real time. So we're going to do that and then we're going to compare and contrast. The way how I set my mixer up, right? There is one, two, three, four, five, six mono channels and then the 7 8 9 10 and 11 and 12 which you don't see here those are six stereo channels um i wrote everything on paper so i'm very meticulous like that so my sample bus is left and right bass is here hats is here snare kick 
on the stereo side when I sum stuff up or send stuff out or in. It's a drum bus, so I can manipulate that stereo channel. And then this one, you need to keep a channel open, um, whether you have a 12 channel, 16 or 24, for your summing bus. Because when you enable multi-track recording, and you sum it, it gets saved to your virtual channel, which is 11 to 12, that sits on here. When you are finished with that, you cannot export it from the SD or from any channel. It sits there. So if you want to manipulate that, you got to reroute it back to a separate stereo channel. All the way in settings, by the way. Um, if you have a task cam, I'm pretty sure you're familiar. If you're not, I could break that down. Um, but what essentially what you do is when you go here, you go to song mode. You find your song, oh, I'm sorry, you go to MTR and you go track edit, track swap, and you take your channel and you swap it with the channel here. When we're done with that, we're going we're gonna to compare the, the MTR song versus the individuals, and we're going to see how much color it sounds. So one sec, let me do that. All right, boom. So I did a one-minute preview just to show what happens, right? So... I just we finished recording this track. Every track has to be labeled from instead of live to MTR for multi-track recording, right? You record in real time. So anything after the MPC is out. So I don't have to press play on the MP. Everything is on the mixer, right? And if you want to preview that, see this play button is blinking. We'll press stop, and you get to preview what's on channel 11 and 12 specifically for the task cam 12. Play. You might not hear anything. Oh yeah, more more. FYI, this is playing on the 11 and 12 channel virtually. I can still make edits. I can mute. Right? And I, let's say I want to keep that. Boom. I like that mix. Boom. It sounds good. We go to menu. Let me see if I can zoom in some more just in case you guys can't see that. We go to MTR. Track edit. Track swap. A it will be 11 and 12. B will be the uh, empty channel you want to use. So for this song, uh, my summer bus is 9 and 10. 9 and 10. So just to confirm, track swap A, 11 and 12, to B, 9 and 10, which is my summer bus. Yes. And then we press menu. All right. Come back out of here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me zoom back out. And my summon bus is muted by that orange light. I'm gonna press, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna press solo and I'm gonna put my mic on just for you guys. So when I press play, this fader should only affect the whole song. So let's try it out. And there we go, right? So when we, I'm gonna pump, pump it up. That was my summing of those channels in real time. Lovely, right? Really lovely. So now peep this. I love what I love about this mixer is I can A or B, A and B um, compare and contrast my multi-track recording to what I did on the out on prior to that. So let's hear what the mix sounds like with this versus what the mix sound like before and after. So let's just let's give it a second. I'm gonna start the track over. This is how it sounds on multi-track recording. And this is how it sounds when it's individual tracks. Now let's listen for them the first five seconds while I A and B. And let what do you think sounds better? This is the individual tracks. And now we're going in to multi-track. It sounds more glued. Listen. Let's play back again. All right. Let's play back again. Multi-track. Individual tracks. That multi-track sounds better. For real, for real, that sounds well better. Um, when you have a cohesive mix like that, it gives you it gives you that that tactile 
promptness to physically touching the knobs, the faders, Taz can really ace that out the park to really being uh, in tune in that moment to mix that song and not just pressing clicks and buttons. And I think that's, you know, why I made this channel and why I use the MP and how I use the MP, you know, is just because I really enjoyed tactile making beats and to a point in time, it just was clicking the mouse back and forth. Um, sometimes it can take the life out of you making music because everything is just automated at that point. So when I was looking for a mixer, um, I didn't know the task can do all of this. And when I read up on it, I was like, oh, I thought it was just a button you press, like something like you click in FL Studio, you just click export, and the next five seconds you got a real track and it's supposed to emulate like you're in the studio or something. But then when I read this stuff and I seen the YouTube reviews and I was like, oh shit, you really got to really... Crit uh, critically manage the levels, the mix, the panning. It sounds so simple on paper because this is like a bunch of digital mixers, but the fact that you have to like really be in unison when you mix this song and the result of that is the result you get of the multi-track recording in live real time that will display and let you know whether you in tune or not is the, is the best thing ever um don't get me wrong there's some days i'm like lazy as fuck and i'm like yo i can't be multi-tracking or there's some days i'm like nah fuck it these individual tracks sound like how they're supposed to I, I love having that option and just tweaking things um but let me know if you love these task cam videos if you if you love them if you love these mixed videos let me know i can produce some more content on it. I know a lot of people have been asking me what my mix consists of. Um, instead of talking about it time and time and again, it's only right I show you. Um, it's not rocket science to me. There's no secret code. It's just, just listening to the right sound. I know everything is subjective and just feeling it, what sounds good. At the end of the day, it's your art. Always stay creative and just have fun doing it. Um, on that note, peace.